Hello everyone and welcome to day three of our language learning masterclass. Hello Laura. Hello. Thank you for being with us again today and just as we've done um, on day one and on day two you have a challenge we have a solution and today the challenge is the lack of structured and regular routine when it comes to learning a foreign language. Now, you know, I have shared with you in um, previous masterclasses that I have been learning a foreign language for nearly 40 years. I have been a language educator for 25 of those years, and I have suffered that problem, and my students have probably eight students out of 10. Apart from those that are extremely disciplined, we know that learning a foreign language is extremely enjoyable. We know of the many benefits of learning a foreign language, but then life gets in the way and we kind of fall off the regular routine one day and we go back on and then it's two days and we go back on and then it's three days and sometime um, the learning gets discontinued and I know that many many of you feel like this and that's the reason why we really wanted to address this challenge as part of a whole day during this master class so we're just going to share little techniques that you can actually use to try and make sure that you stay on track so Laura would you like to start Hi, definitely. So the first thing I really want to talk about is why is it important to have a routine? We we know that when we come to when it comes to language learning, having a routine is important because it's something that's going to help keep you motivated. It's going to help keep you goal orientated and it's going to really help with your progression as well. So when we talk about a routine, it doesn't necessarily mean sitting down at the same time every day saying, OK, I'm going to do uh, an hour of Spanish at eight o'clock on a Tuesday morning, and then I'm going to do uh, an hour and a half at three o'clock on a Thursday afternoon. If we can stick to those kind of routines, that's great. But for the vast majority of us, we have a lot of things to do. You know, we we're very busy. So having those really strict routines aren't always really, really helpful for us because it's something that then we can't stick to and then we get demotivated. And as we spoke about on day one, when we get demotivated, our progress slows down and then we get more demotivated as we spoke about before. So when we talk about establishing a routine in language learning, what we mean is establishing certain things that you do regularly to ensure that you are gonna continue giving yourself enough exposure to the language. And as we spoke about on day one and two, exposure to the language is the most important thing when it comes to putting things from your short-term memory into your long-term memory. So making sure that you have little routines, little things that you do little and often um, in order to ensure that you are regularly participating in and having enough exposure to your language. So when students come to us, a lot of them have their lessons and then they have access to a platform alongside it. And part of my job is that I spend a little bit of time with them. I explain to them how to use the platforms. And one thing that I always say to everyone is that little and often is far more important and more beneficial than, for example, only touching your language once every two weeks, but sitting down and doing an hour. If you can dedicate 10 to 15 minutes every day, or if you can dedicate half an hour every couple of days to actually implementing these little things that you do into if for your language learning, that is gonna be far more beneficial than just sitting down every couple of weeks and doing a real study session, as we might suggest. So when we talk about doing these little things, okay, we've spoken a lot over days one and two of we've given you lots of examples of different things that you can do for your language learning. So, you know, we spoke about podcasts, we spoke about books, we spoke about reading, all the different things, we won't go over them again. So how do we actually put these into a routine is the question that we're going to address today. So I want to bring, uh, I want to talk about an idea that some of you might have heard of, some of you might not have heard of it. It's uh, an idea called habit stacking. Mm -hmm. Habit stacking is essentially taking something that you do every day. That might be making your morning coffee, that might be brushing your teeth, 
that might be uh, ironing your shirts in the morning, whatever it might be, taking that habit, something that you already do every day and stacking a new habit on top of it. So for example, if you know that every day you put your makeup on and you brush your teeth in the morning, then why not take a language learning habit that you want to start to implement and attach it or stack it onto the habit that you already have. That means maybe every morning while I'm brushing my teeth, while I'm putting on my makeup, I'm gonna listen to a 10, 15 minute podcast. Or maybe that means uh, while I'm doing my ironing, which I know is something that I sit down and do every week, I'm gonna watch a TV show in Spanish. Whatever it might be, it's taking something that you already do and attaching your language learning to that thing. This means that you are much, much, much more likely to actually do the habit. It means you aren't gonna start skipping days because you're not gonna start skipping brushing your teeth every morning. You're gonna do that anyway. So you might as well do your Spanish while you're doing it. It means that you have a much higher chance of actually doing the things that you want to do, which in turn is gonna ensure that you have enough exposure to the language, which means that you are gonna have that immersive experience we spoke about. It also means that you're gonna see much more progress because of this immersive experience and because of the fact that you are doing it much more regularly. And in turn, it means that you're going to have a much higher motivation to then do even more studying. For example, if you are doing it every day, if you're doing a little bit every week and you can see that progress, you're much more likely to want to sit down one day and think, OK, now I'm really going to get the hang of these irregular verbs, for example. So these are little tips that you can do, again, to bring your language learning into your everyday life by attaching it to things that you already do to make sure that you are really setting yourself up for the best progression possible. You know, I absolutely love the idea of um, habit stacking. And how often do we say you should look as a, at a language as a lifestyle mm -hmm. rather than just a school subject? Most of us have learned a foreign language at school. And therefore, we have grown to think about a foreign language as a life, as a, as a, as a school subject. But it became a school subject. It is a method of communication, and you should really look at it as something that's part of your lifestyle. And that's when habit stacking really comes in. Once you start to think about a foreign language as not something that you always have to learn textbook style in a classroom, etc. Once you start to think about it as this is a journey and this is something that I'm doing, part of my lifestyle, then suddenly a lot of little things start to click and habit stacking becomes quite natural. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I definitely do what you've just mentioned. Every day I come out of the shower and then I go onto this little table I have in my bedroom to put my makeup on. And every single day, I put on a podcast and it's really interesting because if I don't do it one morning because the dog wants attention or my children are calling me, it feels like something is missing. Mm -hmm. So it's really, I feel it's really quite easy to do things like that and it helps with the routine tremendously. I couldn't agree more. Absolutely. The, there's just a couple of little things that I um, I wanted to talk about as well. When you talked about the structure and the routine, and as you quite rightly said, you know, some of us are very disciplined and need to work according to a routine when we learn a foreign language. Otherwise, we feel a little bit of overwhelmed that there's not enough structure. Other people need to let loose a little bit more. So depending on your style, what we're trying to do here is there still needs to be regular times that are dedicated to the language. So whether you are someone who loves routine and has it in the diary and won't change it, or whether you have someone who feels you suffocate if there's too much of a strict routine, it isn't really about this. It is about, it's about looking at how you like to work and say, okay, the language needs to be incorporated in your lifestyle three times a week, four times a week, five times a week. It can just be once a week. The progression will be longer, but it's much better to stick to something religiously once a week than studying in, in little patches there and then. 
So this is what here we're trying to do. And to me, habit stacking just works. Now, if you are someone who is having uh, regular lessons, we, for example, here at the Academy have created a learning diary. I haven't got a copy with me. It's in my office in the next room. Oh, perhaps you do have a copy, Laura. I do have mine. Of course I have mine because I pick my notes and I study. <laughs> You're a better student than I am. There you go. We, for example, at the Academy have created a learning diary. Why have we done that? Is because we've realized that for the students who were having regular lessons and who were encouraged to go over their notes throughout the week, if things weren't structured, it wasn't working. So rather than um, offering nice little notebooks to our students, we created one that we've called a diary. And there's a reason why it's called a diary. It's because we really want it to be part of their routine. So we've structured it in a way that people can just take notes. And then there's little boxes where they detail perhaps one or two key expressions that they've learned that day verbs that they've covered in that lesson that they'd like to memorize new words and we have found that the students who were using the diary were progressing better they were absorbing and were able to reutilize the language faster why because they had created a little routine on how they were revising the learning in the classroom so I would thoroughly encourage you to do that. And if you'd like one of the learning diaries, please um, please reach out to me and we can, we can send you one. Now, the last point that I would like to make is all about drum rolls, accountability. This is going to work, you know, for everything that you may like to achieve in life or any goals that you are setting yourself, but I'm not a life coach. I am not a mindset coach. I'm only just dealing with my little languages. But hey, accountability is going to make your language learning way more productive. There is absolutely no doubt about it. You know, the reason why people who are part of our academy here, whether it's in France or in the UK, we have, you know, we have customers in Italy, in Spain. When they are part of a language community, whether they are working with a coach, whether they are working as a group, whether they are part of the people who go on residential programs, and so they build a community beforehand because they meet up, etc. They progress better. Are there better students? No, they're not. Are they more able? No, they're not. They have more time than you do to study. No, they don't but they make themselves accountable. They put themselves in a position when they are going to be accountable. And as a result, they stick to the plan. That works for pretty much everything in life. But let me tell you that we run a lot of analysis. Now we've been in this industry for many, many years. And so when we want to give you advice, or, you know, when we run masterclasses, when we write um, white papers about things like that, we are doing so using um, all our experience, whether it's professional or academic, but we run a lot of data as well. And every single time that we are looking at the type of students, their profile, the ones who are achieving their goals and who are progressing very well, those who have made themselves accountable are doing better. So they're working with a language coach. They joined a language community. They have booked into a residential programs. There are different ways of making yourself accountable as language learners, but this is a big word um, in day three of the masterclass. So think about how you can make yourself accountable. Perhaps you have a language partner, someone who's also learning. Think about how you can use this because making yourself accountable will really, really help you. And stick to that routine that we've been talking about. Anything that you'd like to add, Laura? 
Uh, no, that was everything from, from me. But again, to link it back to what we said on day one, to make sure that you stay motivated to keep your habits as well. It's about making sure that you attach it to something that you that you enjoy or make sure that you are trying to implement habits that you're going to enjoy as well. And that's another way to keep you motivated and to make sure that you continue with them and that you stick to them. Absolutely. Can you share with us one of your um, habit stacking? So for me, it's makeup and podcasts. What is it for you? <laughs> Mine's a bit less glamorous. Mine is listening to uh, either a podcast or listening to something on Hypnoledge, which is one of the um, uh, language learning platforms that we work with. Uh, listening to that while I do my ironing. <laughs> oh, well, if it works. It makes, it makes the ironing is- it makes the ironing a little bit more interesting so (laughs) added bonus exactly (laughs) well thank you um very much um this concludes day three of our language master class and we will see you tomorrow as always any question any feedback any breakthrough you have my personal email address please email me back we would be Really happy to hear from you, help and support you outside um, of this masterclass. We will see you again tomorrow for day four. And day four is another challenge that we, um, you know, hear quite a lot. And it's about being worried of making mistakes. I think that this is something that we've all had to go through. But again, we have quite a few good little tips Um, that we'll share with you that will, I am pretty sure, help you to be a lot more confident when you learn a foreign language. So thank you very much for tuning in and we will see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye.